Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Don't do your one on the phone. Chill. Simmer down now. I'm freaking out. All right, guys. This is kind of an easy one today. You're either going to love it or you don't. Because in honor of Valentine's Day, which now oh. I celebrate all the time, because I went from a single guy to uh, nine months away from getting married. I can't believe that right now. Still single. Still single. <laughs> Phil, let me start with you. Anthony, I know you're going to have something to say about this. The 2024 Stadium Series jerseys, which we will see on the ice this weekend. You love them or you don't? Uh, Phil, don't. Don't, not in love. Uh, I am single and do not love it. So, yeah, didn't like the – I'll say this. You could have put the Liberty logo on there. It would have looked a lot better. But the stripes on the arms – and the big numbers on the shoulders make the arms look really congested. Uh, the back doesn't look bad at all. It really doesn't. I, I think that looks nice. But they just they needed to do something different with these. The Islanders jerseys look like a piss poor version of that old Oilers jersey from a few years back. That was um, dark, just the 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 uh, the dark navy and burnt orange that they used. It looks like a poor version of that. The Devils jersey looks. Stupid. The Flyers one actually looks halfway decent, but that's the only one that I think looks any, any good. Uh, otherwise, the other three are not good looking. Anthony, what about you? Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I'm not in love. Um, you know, I, I, I just wonder like who designs these jerseys and like who, like when they have like a focus group of like they decide like is this jersey good? I don't understand what kind of people they get. They're like, oh yeah, it's good. Um, I mean, the Isles one just looked just looks lazy, like just aisles big. Like you couldn't think of anything more creative. I actually was talking to Dermo yesterday at the, at the game. Like what, like I would have liked if they would have had the lighthouse on the front of the Jersey or like they could have, they could have just done a lot of different things um, that I think would have looked a lot better. Um, the Rangers one, like the NYR, it just looks too gaudy and big down. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. Um, Phil's right. The Flyers one isn't terrible. Um, I don't hate the Devils one, but overall, I think they could have all collectively done a much better job. Yeah. You guys hit the nail on the head. I'm going to just get right here, put the love it right on my, uh, or love it not, I should say, right there. I think they're all bad. I mean, the Rangers one's grown on me a little bit, but none of them really that great. They're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's just, you no, know, it's they the Islanders one is like the safest play. And that does, it just comes off unimaginative. The Rangers one with the NYR. I just don't like it. And the, the sleeves are terrible. The, the devil's one I thought was the best one. And it's just basically their Jersey. That's just black and red. Okay. This, this is better than the Jersey. Yeah. I will. I, there's, it's not even an argument in my book. So. Phil, let's go to the next one. The Rangers power play before Christmas. First in the NHL, 31%. Right now, and then after that, 15.8. They rank 21st in the league, and that's just after Christmas. You love the Rangers power play or not? Get the damn gift. <laughs> really? Like this? Love? No. Well, sorry, love it not. Sorry, I hit the wrong one. I was, yeah. jumping, I was trying to jump up to go get the other thing. No, like, this is terrible. It's been atrocious since the Christmas break. I don't know what Laviolette was doing with those power play lines that he put together. Like, I think he's really lost when it comes to this. Because these guys just don't, they don't shoot. I think what he needs to do is take that second line and make that the top unit. And get Chris Kreider and Mika Zibanejad off the top unit. Because they just don't seem to have an idea of what it is. What I would do is the top unit would be, for me, uh, it would be Panarin, Trocek, and um, Lafreniere, Will Cooley in front of the net, and Adam Fox as the point man. And then the second unit, I would go uh, Zibanejad, Kreider, um, Eric Gustafson, Capo Caco, and you could maybe go one of Blake Wheeler or someone else. Uh, I don't. I don't know who, but you can. You could just do that, and then let let those let those guys do it, and then just 
you know, I yeah, Go, Goldberg joking around about VC and Brodzinski, but um, you know, one I, I would say those are what the units should be because Zabenajad is is dragging them down, and Kreider is not getting in front of the net, and he's just not getting the message. He's not active, and he's not doing anything on the power play. He's been a power play merchant for the last few years, and he hasn't been doing anything on the power play lately. So send a message to those two and get them off the first unit. Hold them accountable. Yeah, I got to agree with this, Phil. I'm not in love with it right now. And though their puck movement seems to be pretty good, they're not really attacking the middle at all. And no, there's been way too much or way too little of getting it to the far in front of the net. Just, just get a shot on. They're yeah. not getting enough shots. I think you said it best. When the Islanders had the four-minute penalty last night in our group chat, he said, four minutes, three shots? Honestly, I expect that out of the Rangers, not the yeah. Islanders. And yeah. I, I think as a whole overall, uh, I, I like it. I mean, right now I think it could be a lot of better. A lot better. I think they're trying to get too cute. Um, but they have the right personnel to fix it. And, you know, having a good power play um, makes a difference between – you know, being a top team uh, when, you know, I should say it makes a difference come playoff time. You know, when you don't score goals during the playoffs, it can be the reason why you lose a series. So if the Rangers can get their power play humming, feeling good about themselves going to the postseason, um, I think they'll be good. But right now I would like to see them, you know, operate at more of a higher per- a higher percentage. Um, and like I said, they have the tools to do that. They just have to tinker with some things. But um, we have a, uh, we have someone yeah. joining us. I, I was about to go bring him in just now yeah. because we got the host, the co-host of El Rock and Dermo right now joining us. Dermo, oh, good oh, thing you came on right so now guys, while you're driving. I'm driving. I'm driving. Dermo. <laughs> What's, going What's going on, guys? Dermo, you actually had you actually had impeccable timing on this one because for Valentine's Day, I need to know whether or not you love it or you don't love it. And right now, we go to the Islanders topic. You got Patrick I, you Watt. Bring, you bring it up for a second. Uh, do you love Patrick Watt as the Islanders head coach? I, I do. I, I, I think it's a good pickup. Uh, I know you guys were talking earlier. I know Phil was saying about like, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time and like, you know, but he's happy like they're, he's pushing all the boys. So, yeah, it, listen, Rome wasn't built in a day. Like, you know, if you guys remember, it took Barry until like the middle of December that first year to kind of like get the Islanders on a run here, you know, so it's going to take a little while. Anthony, we heard your opinion on that before. Do you want to just uh, make it official yeah, and yeah, say love he's, it? He's, ab- he's absolutely right, and I mentioned it before. You know, it's going to take a little bit for Watt to put the, his stamp on the team um, and for him to, you know, change change the way he wants them to play on a night-in and night-out basis. And, you know, regardless of what happens this season, if they make the playoffs, miss the playoffs, you know, next year, similar to like kind of when they got Horvat last year, fresh start, full training camp, Watt's going to have a full training camp. Um, and I think that's when you'll you'll probably see how he's really going to have an effect on this team. Uh, you know, right now it's just kind of on the fly, and, and it's hard for him, and it's hard for the players too. But um, he's the right man for the job, as we see. He's he's a guy that doesn't really uh, he's not going to accept not you know playing to your fullest effort. And you saw that this morning with bag skating the team. He was not happy about last night. And listen, that's something Lane Lambert never would have done. Lane would have never done that. Yeah, he would he would have. Yeah. He would have said in his post game, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I like the way we played tonight, and uh, I used too much hair gel last night. Why are you night. using the Greg Holt <laughs> impression for, for it's Lambert? It's just, it's just, I don't know, it's what came to me, but you know, he's um, <laughs> he's he's a guy, he's a guy that would have never done it, and I think uh, I think he's the perfect man for the job. To be honest with you, I, you know, Elrock, I will say one thing. Uh, may, maybe it's just me, but you know, Patty Walk kind of he said when he came in, like. You know, he, he waited for that second opportunity and it took a long time. Yes. He kind of, yep. he came in yelling and screaming, but he didn't like, I don't know, like now he's kind of going to start bag skating him now. And I'm not, I'm not like critiquing him or anything, but like, I kind of like, you should have did that two weeks ago. Like you, you kind of came in as a nice guy and it's like, ah, it's working, but it's not because like, like Phil said, like they lost to Calgary six to two. Like, so like, let's pick which direction we're going here. Are you going to? You're going to, like, light a fire under these guys? Or are you going to, like, well, you know what? Maybe I'll skate them today, but tomorrow's a new day, and we'll just go through the motions again. Like, they have to, like, have that identity with that team. And I, I get it. Like, he hasn't been around in a while, but 
they're three, three and two since Wall was hired on the 20th of January. I, you know what? I, I can't say that I would have bag skated them any earlier than that. I, I I'm, I'm on board as loving him. I think it's a great hire. Uh, yeah. I said when they hired him that that was be that would be the one guy that would concern me. The other guy that would have concerned me if they would have hired him, and I said it months back when Lambert was on the hot seat originally, was Bruce Boudreaux. I thought yeah. that, that would have been another hire yes. that really would have concerned yeah. me as a Ranger fan if, yeah. if the Islanders took him. But you, you, the 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 stretch of games that they've played has not been the easiest stretch of games. I love this hire. I think he pushed the right button at the right time. And uh, that's, for me, as a Ranger fan, I'm concerned about Sunday because I think he pushed the right button at the right time. And with the rust that you would potentially get from being off from Tuesday until Saturday, I think the bag skate is really going to whip their asses into shape. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Better. And I got to say, a uh, part of me is asking, what is he exactly going to change tactically to this team? And that's got me a little bit concerned. He's working on getting rid of the turnovers. That's one thing. But That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? But you know what? I love it. I'm going to go with what the gut reaction is. When I yeah. first saw that, I went, oh, and then immediately did a 50-minute uh, special on that one. And let's go right to the Western Conference uh, and three Canadian teams in the top six. And one of them is on top of the conference and the NHL. A Canadian team coming out of the West. Do you love it, guys? I'm going to start it off. I'm going to say I love it, and it's either going to be, in my opinion, the Canucks, no duh, or Winnipeg. Uh, I love Winnipeg this year. I think they might be playoff tested, and I think Edmonton Oilers are going to run into a team that plays better defense than them, as they do every single year, and then they're going to be ousted. Thermo, let's go to you. You like you like a Canadian team going and coming out of the West? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm not sold on Vancouver still. Um, just because they were so bad last year. And it's just, I don't know. They It was such a quick turnaround. I get it. I know Takik's the coach now. And they got, you know, Lynn home. But I, I like Winnipeg. I think uh, I think bonus is like pushing the right buttons with them. And I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, if they add another little piece or something. I mean, it's certainly possible. Vancouver is, is, has been dominant this regular season, but I'm going to go not in love. You know why? Because I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the team in the Western conference that has the second most points in the Dallas stars. I think the Dallas stars are going to come out of the Western conference. Um, I think, I think their time has kind of been coming. I, I think that they're going to make a move at the deadline. I mean, I, I think like a guy like, for instance, uh, Frank Vetrano. I know he hasn't been linked to Dallas, mostly teams in the East, but I think he would look great in Dallas. Uh, I think I think this is a year that they look at it and say, okay, well, you know, the Canucks, who thought they were going to be here, you know, the Jets, the uh, Golden Knights. I, I think they, they put themselves right up there with the rest of these teams, and they're hot, and I think it's their time. Oh, man. And, uh, you know what? I, I like what Vancouver is doing I wonder about Vancouver come playoff time, though, because I I don't think their defense is great. Uh, I wonder about Quinn Hughes' game when the the whistles start getting put in the pockets more. Yeah, definitely. Because I I really wonder if he's going to draw those same calls come playoff time. I I love Dallas. I I, I said at the beginning of the year that Dallas' offense may be the best top nine in all of hockey. I mean, when they added Matt Duchesne, I, I couldn't believe that they got him and added him on. And I know that Jason Robertson's not having the year that he had the year before where he scored over 100 points. Um, yeah, but he's still going to have a point a game. Oh, yeah, he's he's a point per yeah. game right now. Duchesne's yeah. just under a point per game. Rupe Hintz is just under a point per game. Joe Pavelski's not far off from a point per game. Tyler Sagan's got 40 points. Mason Marchman is having a big bounce back year. You want more from Wyatt Johnson than you thought you would get more from him after the, the rookie year that he had. But I, I just think this team is built come playoff time. I think if they add one more piece, maybe on defense, yes. I think they'd be good. But the emergence of Thomas Harley for me is Yo, he's is been great. Yeah. Dallas. He's been so yeah. good for them this year. And that Dallas team scares me. But Winnipeg, they're another team that if I think if they make one or two moves – I could easily see them going to the cup finals. I it just, they play the right brand of hockey and yeah. they've got arguably the best goaltender in the league, league right now with Hellebuck. 
and oh, I, by the way, just to mention one take on Vancouver, yeah. lack of experience might come back to hurt them. They don't exactly have much playoff success on that roster. Yeah, they're not really battle tested. They're bringing in. They're yeah. bringing in Phil the Thrill though. Phil the Thrill yeah. is working out in Abbotsford. The Winter Classic involving the Blackhawks again. Anthony, do you love it or not? Um, I'm not in love with this. Uh, this is what the the Blackhawks' fifth Winter Classic. Um, fifth, you know, I, I, I get it. They Connor Bedard, the shiny new toy. You know, they want to get him on the spotlight. I understand that, but uh, and don't get me wrong, Wrigley Field's a cool venue. I mean, I'm sure they could do cool things with that. Uh, and they're playing the the Blues are kind of mad at this point. It just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. I thought they could have had a different option. I thought they were going in the right direction when they did Vegas and Seattle this year, kind of like. A new, you know, ex- most recent expansion teams playing. You know, a new a new venue hasn't ever been in Seattle before. Obviously, outdoor. Uh, and you go back to Chicago, it's just, I don't know, I don't, I don't like it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not loving it. I, and the, I, I hate to go back to the whole scandal thing, but why is this team getting more and more, you know, endorsements from the league to yeah. go and just be on another national spotlight after all that. It's just, it's a terrible look for the NHL. The best sport, worst league once again. And this, this comment from Cedar Survival is hilarious. Is Dermo an Uber driver? (laughs) (laughs) I'm kind of an Uber driver. It's just, uh, people don't have a choice. They just get put in the back of the car. So it is what it is. (laughs) So. (laughs) So I get, I get paid no matter what they don't, you know? Oh, all right. How about you, Dermo? You love the Blackhawks in this or not? Um, I absolutely hate it, and <laughs> I'm so tired of the same five teams playing in every winter. I am never going to go to a winter classic, and this is why it's this these situations. It's and again, I you guys are Rangers, I get it, but like it's the Rangers, it's the Red Wings, it's the Bruins. I it's understand the, the original six, but can we just venture out, like Phil said, we did. We did the LA, you know, we did Vegas and Seattle this year. Like, why can't we do two new teams every year? I don't care where you put the game. Put it in put it in the desert for a Coyotes game. But like, yep. why does it have to be the same places over and over again? Wrigley Field, this is the second time. It's been in yep. Fenway Park twice. Like, and honestly, like, all right, I get it's the Blackhawks, Connor Bedard, that's cool. But nobody wants to watch the St. Louis Blues play a Winter Classic. I'm not turning the TV on. I don't really care. Like, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. And it's, and I know this is why they give us, like, the stadium series. It's like, oh, we had the Islanders play an outdoor game. Nobody cares about the stadium series. Let's call it what it is. Like, we want a Winter Classic game. Make two of them. Why don't you do one in the afternoon and one at night? Put one on the East Coast at 3 o'clock and put one on the West Coast at 6 o'clock. Why can't they do that? Like, let's get more teams involved. It's the same teams. So that's my rant on it. I don't like it. You know, that's not a bad idea, Dermo. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually like that idea. Yeah, I'm actually pro stadium series only because you're able to do some of the other, like, I'll say B-tier teams. But the Islanders could have been a winter classic team the last few years. They were challenging for the Stanley Cup. So I mean, why, why not with that? Why weren't the Islanders? Why weren't the Islanders at City Field with the Rangers? Why were the Buffalo yeah. Sabers? Yeah, well, I, mean, I, like, I don't really? think the Buffalo Sabers were the team that year. It, 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 that was the it, because it was the tenth anniversary, and they were the first team that was that hosted it. Uh, yeah, but they, they, they already had it. Uh, they were at Ralph Wilson on the the very first one. What? And Buffalo wasn't even good. Like they weren't even like at that point. No. Like, the Islanders, no. at least the Islanders and the Rangers were both like. Semi competitive teams at that point, Buffalo wasn't good, they yeah. Buffalo was not good what, at that point. And it's by the way, like, guys, it's not even like St. Louis has a good player. Like, let's be realistic do you think the, the, the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be on the Winter Classic in 10 years? No, because they're going to suck. Like, they're only on there because of Sidney Crosby. So, why are we putting the St. Louis Blues on there? Why? Because Phil said it because they want to put a team in there that Connor Bedard can probably beat. Look, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, and again, I'm just going to go with I don't love it. And again, going back to that reason, same thing you just mentioned because you took all my answers, thanks. But it's <laughs> it's just that if you want to market the league and broaden the league out, 
you got to put on new teams. Seattle versus Vegas was a good game because they were the two newest teams. You, yep. They don't exactly uh, – they're not the biggest draw nationally, but you know what? You got them and it's there. And if you want to put Connor Bedard or Connor on there, I don't know. Call me kooky. Let's go back to – I think it's the uh, the fifth winter classic when Detroit played Toronto at the big house and get Connor McDavid on national TV in the United States instead of a heritage classic and like throwing them a bone to be like, here, play the outdoor game in November. There you go. Or, or October. Again, best sport, worst league. Let's not advertise our generate, not even generational, our all time great player because McDavid's going down as a top five player when it's all said and done. But yeah, awesome. why are yeah. we not putting McDavid on a national stage? Like I, Listen, I'm a Ranger fan, but what the hell are you doing wasting the prime years of the best player we've seen since Lemieux or Gretzky? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you, you got to market them. You got to market them better than this. Make it make sense to me, please. No. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great hockey content and an entertaining, interactive podcast. So check us out and our library of videos. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.